This productive pattern was banned for use in competitions, and today I'm going to show you how to tie it. We'll secure some white thread to the hook shank and snap the excess free. We'll prevent our bead from spinning around the hook by inserting some lead free wire, securing it, and helicoptering the excess free. Lay down a thread base until you reach your hook point. We'll then grab my new favorite mop material called Galaxy Mop. You can pick it up from the J Stockard website for 15% off using the code above. This particular one is in tan. Secure the mop material tightly to the top of your hook shank, and if you want it to be extra secured, you can add some super glue. Snip your galaxy mop to length, and wrap your thread to the head of the fly. Here, we'll fold over our thread, create a loop, and wrap it back towards the mop material. Return your thread to the head of the fly, leaving us with this dubbing loop. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a laser dubbing in tan. Insert it into our dubbing loop and spin it up. We'll then brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. We'll wrap our dubbing up the body until we reach the thread. Secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Finish it off by brushing it out to give it an extra buggy look. And this is the Galaxy Mop, one of my new favorite variations of the mop fly to fish. You can pick up all the materials needed to tie this fly by clicking the JStockard link below. Additionally, JStockard has provided a $25 gift card to one lucky winner. To win, comment hashtag JStockard in the comments below. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If there are brook trout where you fish, this is a must-have streamer. To start this pattern, we'll grab some ultra thread in 140 in fluorescent orange and secure it to our hook shank. Snip the excess free and continue wrapping to the bend of the hook. Next, we will grab a golden pheasant cape, select a single feather and secure it to the back of the fly. Continue securing it to our hook shank, fold the excess over, and wrap up towards the head of the fly. We'll fold our excess back over and secure it tightly to the head of the fly, snipping the excess free. We'll then grab some brassy wire, here I'm using hot orange. Secure this to our hook shank, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, we will return our thread to the head of the fly Grabbing some peacock curl, we'll select about four fibers, secure them to the head of the fly, once again wrapping them back towards the tail. Once complete, we'll use our thread to completely cover any visible feathers as we wrap up towards the head of the fly. If you'd like, you can secure some floss to the body to accomplish the same thing. However, I prefer to use thread. Once the body is built up and we've reached the head of our fly, grab your peacock curl, folding it over the back of our fly and securing it tightly in place. Snip the excess free and grab your brassy wire and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals towards the head of the fly. If your peacock curl begins to twist in the process, just simply push it back into place and continue securing with your wire. Take your time with this step and try to make sure the wire is evenly spaced. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind, and helicoptering the excess free. We will whip finish, snipping our orange thread free. We will then grab some ultra thread in black, securing this to the head of our fly. Snip your excess free and grab a white bucktail. Select a small clump of fur about the size of your streamer and secure it tightly to the head of our fly. To do so, we'll take a loop around the fur prior to tightening it down on the head of the fly. This will help prevent the deer hair from spinning around our hook. With the deer hair secure, we'll tighten it down and snip the excess free. Cover any exposed fur and take your time not to build up too much thread. Next, we will grab some red feathers selecting a small clump and tying it onto the throat of our fly. Secure tightly, snip the excess free, and grab a white goose feather. Cut a small portion free and tie it onto the bottom of our fly. With it lightly secured, we can move it to where we would like it to be and secure it tightly. Snip the excess free and whip finish to hold everything in place. 
And this is a baby brook trout. I like to use this pattern most in backcountry brook trout ponds. However, it also works well anywhere you find brook trout and in the fall. If you'd like to support the channel and try this fly, you can visit my website below or submit a custom order. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of my most used stonefly nymphs, and today I'm going to show you how to tie it. We'll start off with some black thread and snip the excess free. Insert some lead free wire into the bead, secure it, and helicopter the excess free. We'll then continue wrapping well into the bend of the hook and build up a thread dam for our next step. With this complete, we'll grab some biots. Here I like to use brown to add a bit of contrast. Place them in a V formation, securing them to the back of the fly. Wrap back slightly onto your thread dam that'll help splay the tails apart. Continue to secure the biot stems to the hook shank and begin building up a body transition slightly past the hook point. This'll, this'll build up bulk and give the tail section a better look. With this complete, we'll grab some medium black vinyl, secure it to the hook shank and wrap back towards the tail. Return your thread forward and begin wrapping the vinyl forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. Once complete, secure, taking several thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and snipping the excess free. Secure your tag end in place and whip finish, cutting your thread free. We'll swap out to a smaller thread for these next steps. Secure it to the head of the fly, snap the excess free, and grab a small piece of thin skin. Secure it to the top of your fly, and wrap back towards your vinyl. Next, grab the dubbing of your choice. Here I'm using a copper ice dubbing. Create a dubbing noodle, begin by wrapping just in front of your vinyl, and finishing with your thread slightly in front. Grab a single biot and secure it to the side of your fly. The dubbing ball will help push it out, measuring this one to length to be about the size of our vinyl body. Do the same to the other side and snip the excess free. We'll create another dubbing noodle, again using our copper dubbing, and wrap this just in front of our biots. Once complete, we'll fold over our thin skin, secure it tightly in place, folding it back over on itself and securing once again. With this complete, we'll repeat the previous steps two more times, bringing us to the head of the fly for a total of six legs. With this complete, you can snip your thin skin free and whip finish to hold it all in place. Next, we'll add a generous amount of UV resin, starting just slightly onto our vinyl ribbing over the top of the thin skin, and then slightly onto the head of the fly. Fix in place with the UV light, and brush the legs free to give it a nice, buggy look. If you want to take an extra step, you can fold the legs over, pressing them with a pair of pliers in order to give them an extra buggy look. And this is the vinyl stonefly. Its sleek, streamlined nature helps it sink quickly in the water, but it also has an excellent profile. You can find it on my website listed below. And if you'd like to win this one, or I'll throw in six. If you'd like to win six of these, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This fly can help you catch more fish. To start, we'll grab some olive thread and secure it to our hook shank, keeping the scraps for a later step. Continue wrapping just before the bend of the hook and reverse your thread to the hook point. We'll then grab some micro fibbits. However, here I'm using some synthetic deer hair. It makes for a versatile replacement that can be used in multiple situations. Select out three fibers and measure them to be about the length of your hook shank. Secure them carefully to the back of your fly, ensuring that you don't wrap too far into the bend of your hook. Once complete, snip your excess free and secure them tightly to the hook shank, ensuring that they don't move around. With this complete, we'll grab our strand of thread we just set to the side, string it through our hook, 
and use your fingers to help separate the microfibbits. Carefully sliding your thread up the hook shank in between them to help create separation. Secure your thread in place and snip the excess free. Secure tightly, but make sure you don't wrap back on the microfibbits. This step helps ensure that they splay out nicely like a mayfly's tail. Next, we'll grab some olive dubbing. Here I'm using a PMD color, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping this up the fly, creating a smooth transition towards the hook eye. Be sure to add or tighten your dubbing as needed. Once complete, we'll lay down a thread base towards our hook eye, returning and wrapping back on top of the dubbing slightly. Next, we'll grab a CDC feather, here I'm using a sulfur color, and measure it to be about the length of our body. Secure using your thread, wrapping back towards the dubbing. There's a few ways you can tie this fly. You can do as I'm doing here, wrapping forward on our CDC, folding it back, and securing it just as we've done before. This will help utilize your extra CDC and add a bit more flotation to your fly. So if you'd like to use this as a dry fly, I would highly suggest adding this extra step. However, I typically use this as an emerger behind a second dry fly and don't mind if it sinks. So I'll simply snip this excess free, which makes for a cleaner looking fly pattern. Our next step is to grab some more dubbing, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping it forward to continue our transition towards the head of the fly, having it slope down once we reach the hook eye. With this complete will whip finish to hold everything together, snip the excess free, and secure in place with some UV resin. And this is the RS2. It's a highly versatile fly that I've caught fish using it as a nymph, an emerger, and even a dry fly. And I would highly suggest giving it a shot this spring. And if you'd like to win this one, be sure to comment below, hashtag flies, and I will see you in the next one. If you're not using this dry fly, you're missing out. To start, we'll grab some white thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. Next, we'll grab some para wing. I like to use a high-vis orange, and secure it tightly to the top of the hook shank. We'll use this to create a post. Pulling the fibers up, use your thread to secure it, as well as wrap around it in order to create our post. Doing so by starting with loose wraps, wrapping tighter and tighter as you go, is gonna be your best approach. Once you've started the post, wrap back down to the base and secure it tightly. I like to make small wedges on either side of my post to ensure it doesn't spin around the hook shank. Continue extending your post slightly, wrapping back down to the base and snipping the para wing to length. We'll keep it a bit longer than necessary for our next steps. Wrap your thread well into the bend of the hook and grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a March Brown color. You can find the specific dubbing I'm using in the links below. Create a dubbing new and begin wrapping this up the hook shank until we reach our post. Doing so in closed touching spirals and tightening or adding more material as needed. Next, we'll grab some saddle hackle. Here I'm using a tan color. Select a single feather and measure it to length. Strip the tips free. Strip away some of the fibers of your feather and secure it to the hook shank, leaving a bit of extra material so we can wrap it up the post. Continue securing and snip the excess free. Wrap your thread back towards the post, lifting your feather upward and using your thread to secure it in place. With this complete, wrap to the bottom of your post and grab a different colored dubbing. I like to use a second color that complements the first and is typically a bit darker. Here I'm using a brown. Create a dubbing noodle and begin dubbing your body towards the hook eye. Once again in closed touching spirals, adding more material as necessary. Ensuring that your final thread wrap is on top of the dubbing we just placed. Grab your saddle feather and begin to hackle this around the post. Doing so in closed touching spirals until you reach your thread. If you find your hackle is a bit sparse, you can tie in two feathers. Once complete, secure in place, trying to prevent from trapping any fibers beneath, and snip the excess free. Trim your pair of posts to length, and color in your thread to match whatever body color you decided on. Snip the excess free, and clean up any trapped feathers. And this is the clink hammer. Its profile looks like an emerging insect and makes a great addition to any dry fly box. I would highly suggest giving it a try. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're gonna to be tying up one of my all-time favorite dry flies that works particularly well for cutthroat and brook trout. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, secure it to our hook shank, and grab some golden pheasant crest. 
We'll select a single feather, measure it to be about the size of our hook shank, and secure it to the back of the fly. Continue securing it up the hook shank, stopping just short of the hook eye. Snip your excess free, and cover up the tag ends. Next, we'll grab some peacock curl. Selecting one or two fibers, securing it to our hook shank, and wrapping back towards the tail. Advance your thread slightly, and begin wrapping your peacock curl forward until we reach our thread, doing so in closed touching spirals. We will also be doing a giveaway for this fly, so if you'd like to win it, all you have to do is comment hashtag flies and subscribe to the channel. And if you don't win and want to give it a shot, you can pick some up on my website listed below. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure and continue wrapping forward while leaving a small gap. We'll then advance the thread past the peacock curl and continue to palmer the peacock curl just as before, this time making it slightly shorter. Once complete, secure with your thread and snip the excess free. We'll also snip our thread free and switch over to a red thread. Here I'm using a flat 140 ultra thread. Secure it to your hook shank, snip the excess free, and use your thread to build up a prominent base. This will be the hot spot of the fly. Once happy, we'll whip finish to secure it in place and snip the excess free. Once again, switching over to our black thread. Next, we'll grab some brown saddle hackle, select a single fiber, and secure it to the head of the fly. Set it aside, and if you'd like to tie the original, grab a white calf tail. However, I prefer to use this white poly yarn. We'll place the poly yarn on top of the fly and secure it tightly in place. In order to create separation by crossing over your thread in between them in a zigzag pattern and also wrapping both behind, as well as in front of our poly yarn, to give it some security. In the end, it should be propped up like so. Once happy, we'll grab our saddle hackle and begin to hackle it forward in closed touching spirals, wrapping it in between our poly yarn when we get there, and continue doing so until you reach your thread, at which point we'll secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We'll then whip finish to secure everything in place and build up a prominent head. Snip your thread free, and finally trimming your poly yarn to be slightly longer than your hackle. And this is the Royal Wolf. It was my favorite childhood fly that works exceptionally well as an attractor pattern for brook trout as well as cutthroat, and I'd highly encourage you to give it a shot. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, we're going to be tying an underutilized fly pattern that deserves a spot in your fly box. To start, grab some small copper wire, secure it to the hook shank, wrapping well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll reverse our thread's direction back to the head of the fly. If you have a rotary vise, put in a couple turn whip finish and set your thread to the side. We'll then grab our wire and use your vise's rotary function to wrap it towards the head of the fly. If your vise doesn't have a rotary function, you can simply do this by hand. Today is also the airing of the first ever Mainly Flies podcast. You can find that on my second channel linked here. The primary focus will be to answer your fly tying questions. So if there's anything you want to know more detail about, be sure to leave it in the comments of the most recent podcast. Once we reach the hook point, We'll grab our thread and secure the wire tightly in place, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the excess free. We'll then grab some tinsel. Here I'm using a gold hollow tinsel. Secure it to one side of our fly, wrapping back towards the wire. Repeating this process with the other side. Secure tightly and begin to build up a larger head than our body. Fold your tinsel over and secure it to the head of the fly. Take your time to ensure they're oriented how you like. With this complete, snip the excess free and whip finish to hold everything in place and cover your tag ends. Snip your thread free and grab some bone dry UV resin to paint over the body as well as the head. Fix in place with the UV light and add a second drop to the head of the fly. We want to make this look a little bit larger than the body. Fix with UV light and this is the brass It's a highly productive fly pattern that often gets overlooked and they work exceptionally well in the spring and winter months. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you.
in the next one. This is a fly that's very popular in my home waters, but relatively unknown everywhere else. We'll start this pattern by grabbing some red UTC and securing it to our hook shank. Snip the excess free and continue wrapping your thread to the bend of the hook. We will then grab some ginger marabou, securing it tightly to the back of the fly. In order to build up the body, we'll fold over the marabou, wrap our thread forward, and then fold the marabou back towards the bead, securing it in place. Further secure the marabou to your hook shank, and this is a quick way to build up a body. Snip the excess free and grab some gold estaz. Pulling off the tips, exposing the braided line, and secure it to the back of the fly. Once complete, we will start to wrap our thread forward, taking time to completely cover any exposed feathers. This is a key step in producing this pattern. Once complete, we will grab our gold estaz and begin wrapping it forward in open spirals, using your fingers to pull the estaz backwards each wrap to ensure you don't trap any underneath. Once at the bead, we will secure the estaz in place, taking wraps both in front and behind, snipping the excess free. We can then grab a whip finisher and build up a prominent band at the head of our fly. This is a hot spot that's very characteristic of this pattern. And this is the Golden Retriever. Originally invented for panfish, it is also extremely successful for trout and salmon. If you'd like to try this fly, but don't tie yourself, you can visit my website listed below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. This is one of the world's most used and popular fly patterns. To tie it, we'll start off with some brown thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping until you reach the bend of the hook and grab some pheasant tail. We'll grab about five or six fibers, measure them to be roughly the length of the hook shank, and secure them to the back of the fly. Once complete, we'll continue wrapping towards the bead, further securing the pheasant tail as we go. Snip the excess free, and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Insert the wire into your bead, and secure wrapping back towards the tail. We'll bring our thread forward, just past the hook point, grab some more pheasant tail, and secure it to our hook shank, once again wrapping back towards the tail. With this complete, we'll begin wrapping our pheasant tail forward in closed touching spirals. You can do so by just wrapping it around with your fingers. However, if your vise has a rotary function, this makes the process far easier. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure the pheasant tail in place and snip the excess free. We'll then grab our brassy wire and begin to wrap it forward, counter-wrapping our pheasant tail as we go. Doing so will help increase the durability of this pattern. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure and helicopter the excess free. Grab a few more strands of pheasant tail and secure them with the tips facing out past the bead. Generally, I measure mine to be about one and a half bead lengths. Continue securing the pheasant tail on top of our hook wrapping back towards the wire. Once complete, bring your thread forward and grab some peacock curl. We'll select a couple strands, secure them to the body, and wrap back towards our pheasant tail. We'll return our thread to the bead and begin wrapping our peacock curl in closed spirals towards the head of the fly. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping our excess furry. We'll then take our fingers and use them to splay out our pheasant tail tips to form some legs. Once happy, we'll fold over the remaining pheasant tail fibers, secure them just behind the bead, and snip the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place. The pheasant tail is a classic pattern that is one of the most known and used patterns out there. It makes for a great general pattern, imitating mayflies and caddis exceptionally well. You can find this pattern on my website, but if you would like your chance to win this fly, comment hashtag flies, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This is a must-have dry fly. To tie this pattern, we will use Vivas in 16 knot in black, securing it tightly to our hook shank and snapping the excess free. We can then grab some grizzly saddle feathers, selecting one whose fibers are a bit longer than our hook gap. Pull off some excess fibers and use that to secure it tightly to our hook shank, wrapping back into the bend of the hook. Once finished, we'll wrap forward, grabbing some peacock curl. We'll select about three fibers and tying them onto the head of our fly, wrapping back towards the tail. 
Once complete, we will return our thread to about one third down the hook shank and tie in some orange para post. Securing it tightly and pulling both strands up in order to create a post. To do this, we will lightly wrap our thread around the base and continue to do so until the post stands up straight. Once complete, we can wrap back down to the base and take some further securing wraps to ensure our post doesn't twist around the hook shank. We'll snip it to length and wrap our thread to the head of the fly. We can now begin to wrap our peacock curl up the body. I like to twist mine into a braid and then continue to wrap it up the body. We will do so in closed touching spirals, trying to prevent any of our parapost material from being trapped underneath. However, if you do trap some, it's easily picked free. Once we reach the head of the fly, we will secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We will now begin to wrap our saddle hackle forward and we will do so in open spirals until we reach the head of our fly. At which point we can secure, taking thread wraps both in front and then pulling all the fibers back to build up a small head. With that complete, we will snip the excess free and cut our pair post to length. We will then whip finish to secure everything in place, and this is a high-vis Griffith Nat. It is a fantastic dry fly pattern that deserves a spot in your fly box. Speaking of fly boxes, if you would like to help support the channel, you can visit my website to purchase flies, fly boxes, or other merchandise below. Thank you all so much for the support, and I will see you in the next one. We're going to be tying up one of the best variations of the band Squirmy Worm. We'll start with some hot pink thread, snip the excess free, securing the bead in place using some lead-free wire. Helicopter the excess free and continue wrapping to the bend of the hook, at which point we'll take a few wraps forward and grab some stretchy material. Here I'm using a rubber D-rib, however, I would suggest using a stretchy dental band that I've linked in the comments. Create a loop with your material and secure it to the back of the fly. Make sure your loop secured tightly by taking securing wraps both in front as well as behind your loop and continue towards the head of the fly. Snip one of your excess bands free, once again continuing towards the head of the fly. We'll fold our rubber material backwards, take a few securing wraps towards the head of the fly, and once again create a loop in our rubber band, using your thread to secure it lightly in place at first. This way, by pulling on the opposite end, we can shrink the loop to the size we're looking for. Once happy, secure in place with your thread and continue wrapping towards the bend of the hook. Snip your excess free and use your thread to smooth out the body. Finishing at the head of the fly. Hold everything in place by whip finishing, snip your thread free, and paint over everything with some UV resin to add shine and durability to our pattern. Fix in place with the UV light and grab some spare wire. Use the wire to string it through the two loops that we just created and open up the loops at the end using a pair of tweezers. Next, we'll grab some squirmy wear material, here I'm using pink, insert it through our loop, and begin pulling the wire to help draw the squirmy wear material through the two loops. They should be quite tight to hold it in place. Once complete, remove the wire, snip the squirmy wear material to length, and this is an improved squirmy worm, suggested by Tim from the Trout and Feather. I've linked his full video in the comments below. It's an excellent pattern that promotes a lot of movement in the water and also can be replaced if the fish chew it up. I would highly suggest giving it a try. And as always, if you'd like to win this one, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. If you fish for trout in the winter, this fly is a must have. We'll start off with some olive thread, snap the excess free, grabbing some brassy wire. Here I'm using chartreuse. Insert the wire into our glass bead and secure it tightly. Continue securing our wire to the hook shank well into the bend of the hook. If you want to see the exact materials used in any of these patterns, you can check them out in the comments below. Once we reach the back of the fly, we'll reverse directions and start building up a thread transition towards our bead. Next, grab your wire and begin to wrap this in open spirals towards our thread, ensuring that each wrap is evenly spaced. 
Secure the wire by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. To increase durability as well as shine of this pattern, you can coat the back of it in UV resin. Once happy, fix in place with a UV light and grab some chartreuse crystal flash. Fold over the flash, creating two or four loops, whatever your preferences are, and secure them just behind the bead. Ensure you secure it tightly and snip the excess free. So we'll grab some olive dubbing. Here I'm using one with some UV fibers. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping it just in front of our crystal flash wing. Once happy, secure everything in place by whip finishing and snip your thread free. Finally, brush everything out to give it a nice buggy look. I like to use this fly both in the winter as well as the spring months. If you don't tie and want to try this out for yourself, you can pick it up from my website below. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today we are making a must have fly for all fly fishermen. To begin this pattern, we will start by wrapping a lead free wire around the head of our fly. Take several wraps around your hook shank and finish by jamming it into the bead. We will then select some black thread, secure this tightly to our hook shank snapping the excess free. Use your thread to secure the excess wire and also secure all the wire wraps in place. Helicopter the excess free and begin wrapping to the bend of our hook. Here we will build a small thread dam that will become important in our next step. Grab some brown biots, select two and place them in a V formation, tying them onto the back of the fly. Secure tightly and wrapping up the hook shank until we reach our wire. Snip the excess free and grab some brassy wire. Here I've selected chartreuse, which is one of my favorite variations. Secure your wire tightly to your hook shank and wrap back towards our biots. Once complete, smooth out the back section of your fly and wrap your thread forward, leaving a little bit of room for the next steps. Next, we will grab our wire and begin wrapping these in closed spirals until we reach our thread. Do your best to allow each wrap to touch the previous one, leaving no gaps. This is a little easier with a rotating vise, but can be done without it. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure the wire in place and helicopter the excess free. Select some uni mylar, here I'm using pearl tying it just behind the bead and wrapping back towards our wire. We will then select some thin skin, here I'm using clear. Tie this around the head of our fly, once again wrapping back towards the wire. Our next step will be grabbing some peacock curl, selecting about two to three fibers and securing them to the head of the fly. Once complete, we can begin wrapping our peacock curl forward towards our thread. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. Next, grab a partridge feather. I prefer to select a darker brown feather. Snip off a section so it forms a V. Tie it just behind the bead so it looks something like this. With this complete, fold over your thin skin and secure it just behind the bead. You will then grab the stem of our partridge feather, pulling it forward carefully to shorten our wings. I like to stop when my wings reach where my wire started. Once happy, snip the excess free, fold over your mylar and secure it tightly in place. Snip both the mylar and the thin skin off closely and whip finish to hold everything in place. An important part of this pattern is some UV resin. This one in particular is my favorite. You can find it in the links below. And add a drop of it just behind the bead covering our wing case. If you'd like to support the channel and pick up a few of these, you can find them listed in all my favorite variations in my fly shot listed below. And if you'd like to win this one, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, and comment hashtag flies for your chance to win. This freshwater shrimp is a must have. To start this pattern, we'll grab some olive vivas thread, secure it to our hook shank, snap the excess free, and continue Continue wrapping well into the bend of your hook. Next, we'll grab a mallard flank, secure about 10 fibers to the back of the fly, further securing it and wrapping up the hook shank. Once we reach the hook eye, we'll snip the excess free and wrap back towards our tail. Make yourself a tiny set of eyes out of some monofilament line. Secure it to the back of the fly. Use your thread to secure it tightly and also help orient it in the proper direction. 
Once complete, we'll wrap up towards the hook eye, grab some small green wire, and secure it to the head of our fly, wrapping back towards the eye. I also want to take a second to say thank you to Jay Stockard for bringing you this video. You can pick up all the needed materials to tie this pattern for 15% off in the link below. With our wire secured, we'll grab a dubbing blend. Here I'm using some ice dubbing in copper, green, and chartreuse. Create a dubbing noodle and begin wrapping this up the body until we reach the hook eye, at which point we'll brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Grab some UV resin, this one's my favorite, and spread it over the back of your fly. Once happy, we'll secure with a UV light and then we'll come back and add a second layer. Building up UV resin in small layers at a time will help give the fly a cleaner look. Grab our wire and begin wrapping this in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Try to prevent from trapping as many fibers as possible in the process. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and helicoptering the wire free. Whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip your thread free and brush out any trapped fibers, adding one more layer of UV resin over the top of our wire. And this is one of my favorite versions of a scud. Jay Stockard has provided a $25 gift card to one lucky winner. For your chance to win, all you have to do is like the video, subscribe, and comment hashtag Jay Stockard in the comments below. This is one of the world's best patterns that can catch just about anything. To start, we'll wrap some lead-free wire around the hook shank using an old pair of scissors to snip the tips free. Jam the lead-free wire into the bead and grab some black uni thread. Here I'm using 6 aught. Secure the thread to the hook shank just behind the wire, snapping the excess free. Continue to secure the wire in place, building up a thread dam in the process. This will help hold the bead and wire in place. Continue wrapping to the back of the hook and grab some black marabou. Measure your marabou to be about one and a quarter times the hook shank and secure it tightly to the back of the fly. Fold over the marabou and wrap up towards the lead-free wire, folding the marabou back over and securing it in place. Snip the excess free, wrapping back towards the tail. Next, we'll grab some blue crystal flash, grabbing about four strands and tying it onto one side of the fly, folding the extra over and securing it to the other side. Secure tightly and snip the excess free, keeping the crystal flash a bit longer than our marabou. Next, we'll grab some blue brassy wire, secure it to our hook shank, wrapping it back towards the tail. In this variation, I like to swap out the chenille for the flashier estaz. Here I'm using a UV black and blue. Pull some of the fibers free and secure it to the hook shank, wrapping towards the head of the fly. With this complete, we'll grab our estaz and begin to wrap it forward in open spirals, doing so until we reach our thread, at which point we can secure, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the estaz, and snipping the excess free. Next, we'll grab a black feather to palmer our body. Here I'm using a saddle hackle, but I would highly suggest using a schloppen feather. They're going to be a bit longer and give your fly a better look. I just couldn't seem to find mine, and thought it was a good opportunity to show you that if you don't have the exact feathers you want, you can still make a pattern that'll work. And that goes for any of my flies. Once we reach the tail, we will secure it using our blue wire, counter-wrapping the feather that we just palmered the body with. This will help increase durability and add a little bit of flash with the wire. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure, taking securing wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and helicoptering the excess free. Clean up your excess feather, whip finish for durability, and add a bit of head cement. And this is the Crystal Flash Woolly Bugger. This particular variation is one of my favorite to use in dark and deep water. So remember, if you don't have the exact materials you need, don't let that stop you from creating a pattern. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Many believe that this highly successful fly pattern should be banned. To tie it, we'll start off with some pink UV beads and use a lighter to heat up the hook. Grab your bead and pull it in an upward motion to adhere it to the top of the hook. We'll grab some Vivas thread, here I'm using white, secure it to the hook shank and snap the excess free. Next, we'll tie in a small bit of egg yarn, folding the ends over 
and securing it tightly to the hook. Snip it to length, whip finish to hold everything in place. Snip the excess thread free and brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. While many believe that the lack of natural materials should deem this pattern banned, eggs are a natural forage and highly successful at catching fish. Let me know your thoughts on the matter in the comments below. This fly pattern is my secret weapon when it comes to imitating midges. To start, we'll secure some black thread to our hook shank and grab some peacock curl. Select a single strand using your fingernails to strip off any fibers, leaving you with the quill underneath. Secure the strip quill to the hook shank and wrap well into the bend of the hook. Reverse your thread direction and finish around the hook point. We'll then grab our quill and carefully begin to wrap this in closed touching spirals towards our thread. At which point we'll secure and snip the excess free. We'll then add some UV resin over our quill. This will not only add shine, but also increase the durability of the highly delicate quill. Once happy, secure with a UV light and grab some CDC. This maroon color works exceptionally well in my waters. Secure to the top of your fly using a pinch wrap and wrap it back slightly on top of your quill. Once complete, grab some dubbing. Here I'm using a light tan. Create a sparse dubbing noodle and begin to dub your body, tightening and removing or adding material as needed once complete, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look, being careful not to break your CDC feather. Once happy, we'll fold over our feather and secure it just behind the hook eye. Snip the excess free, folding everything back and whip finishing just behind the hook eye. And this is the smoke jumper. I like to use this pattern to imitate small midges, typically tying it behind a clink hammer or a parachute atoms. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag fly tying in the comments below. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. If you want to catch more fish, today's fly is for you. To start this pattern, we'll grab some 140 UTC in fluorescent pink, secure that to the hook shank and snip the excess free. Continue to the bend of the hook, grabbing some pink squirmy worm material. We'll secure this tightly to the back of the fly, wrapping towards the bead. Flatten the body out as much as you can, but don't worry about it too much because we'll be covering it in our next step. Once we're happy with how the tail looks, grab a second piece of squirmy worm material, tying it on the body of your fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Once complete, return your thread to the head of the fly and begin wrapping your squirmy worm material in loose spirals. Pulling the material too tight can result in it falling apart after the first fish. Once you reach your thread, secure, taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snipping the excess free. We will then whip finish to hold it in place. If you want to win this fly, comment hashtag flies below. And if you would like to support the channel and purchase a few, you can visit my website. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. Today, we'll be tying a nymph that's been used to win several fly fishing competitions. To tie it, you can grab a Cock de Leon feather, or I'm just using a black saddle hackle. Strip away a few feathers and secure them to the back of the fly. We want these to be about the same length as our hook shank, and snip the excess free. Next, we'll grab some pearl flashaboo, secure it to the head of our fly, wrapping back towards the tail. Complete, we'll reverse our thread's direction and begin building up a body transition towards the head of the fly. Your finished product should look something like a carrot and it will help hold our bead in place. Once complete, we'll start wrapping our flash boo forward in closed touching spirals, doing so until we reach our thread. Secure with your thread and snip the excess free. Whip finish to hold everything in place Snip your thread free and paint over the body section with some UV resin. This will add shine and durability to our pattern. Fix with a UV light and seal your wife's or your girlfriend's eyeshadow and mix it up with some thin UV resin. Add a small drop to cover the bead as well as the body section and hit it with a UV light. And this is the Gasolina, a highly productive fly pattern that is likely in every competition angler's fly box. And there's a reason for that, so I would highly suggest giving this one a shot. Subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. If you fish for trout, this is a must-have fly. To start this pattern, we'll grab some Vivas in black, securing it tightly to our hook shank. Snap the excess free and fix our bead in place with a lead-free wire. 
Secure the lead free wire tightly and helicopter the excess free. Next, we'll build up a small thread dam behind our lead free wire and grab a piece of olive vinyl. Secure that just behind our lead free wire and wrap back towards the bend of our hook. Once complete, we'll reverse directions, further securing our vinyl wire and leaving a bit of room at the head of the fly. We can begin to wrap our vinyl wire forward in closed touching spirals. We'll continue to do so until we reach our thread. If you would like to win this fly, like the video, click subscribe and comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Once we reach our thread, we'll secure the vinyl wire by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind and snip the excess free. We'll then grab some black hair's ear, create a dubbing noodle and wrap that around the head of our fly, tightening the dubbing noodle as needed. And finally, brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. Pull any excess fibers free whip finish and that is our finished fly thank you for watching subscribe for more and i will see you in the next one we're going to be tying a spring nymph that deserves a spot in your fly box to start we'll grab some small wire here i'm using green as well as some brassy wire in chartreuse select a single strand of chartreuse and two green wires however as for all of my patterns you can use whatever colors you like to best match the bugs in your rivers Secure them to the hook shank and begin wrapping well into the bend of the hook. Once complete, reverse your thread's direction and we'll begin to build up a smooth transition to form our body. Grab your wires and begin to wrap them forward in closed touching spirals, ensuring that the green remains in contact with the chartreuse, continuing to do so until we reach our thread. Once complete, we'll secure, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind our wire, and helicoptering the excess free. Bring your thread to the head of the fly, and grab some mylar. Here I'm using pearl. Secure the mylar to the head of the fly, wrapping back towards our wire. Once complete, use your thread to build up a body that's even with your wire leaving a small amount of room at the head of the fly. And grab some pearl UV crystal flash, selecting four strands and securing them to the head of the fly. Fold your strands over and secure them back towards our wire. Once complete, snip the excess free. Next, we'll fold our mylar over, secure it to the head of the fly, and snip the excess free. With this complete whip finish to build up a small head. Snip your thread free and paint over the back, head section, and our body with some UV resin. This will add shine and durability to our pattern. And this is the Juju Betis. This particular pattern works well to imitate blue wing olives. However, it can represent a variety of insects. If you'd like to win this fly, comment hashtag flies in the comments below. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. This simple midge can help you catch more fish. To tie it, we'll start off with some black thread, secure it to the hook shank, and snap the excess free. Next, we'll grab some red crystal flash, measure it to be about the length of the hook shank, and secure it to the back of our fly. With the tail secured, we'll begin wrapping up towards the bead, snip the excess free, and grab some wire. Here I'm using small in the color rust. Insert the wire into the bead, secure tightly, and wrap towards the back of the fly. Once we reach the tail, we'll reverse directions. Once we reach the tail, we'll reverse direction, wrapping our thread towards the bead. Once complete, grab your wire and begin wrapping it in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Take your time to ensure that each wrap is evenly spaced. Once you reach your bead, secure, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, then helicopter the excess free. Next, we'll grab some dubbing. This is one of my new favorites. You can find it in the links below. Create a dubbing noodle and wrap it just behind the bead. And brush it out to give it a nice buggy look. 
And this is an Inferno Midge. Makes for a great attractor pattern, it sinks quickly, and can be used year round. If you don't tie and would like to try it, you can pick some up on my website below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. This underrated pattern is a trout magnet. To tie it, we'll start off with some red Vivas thread, secure it to our hook shank, and snip the excess free. Next, we'll grab some brassy wire, here I'm using silver. Insert the wire into the bead and secure tightly using your thread. Continue wrapping and securing your wire well into the bend of the hook. At which point, we'll reverse directions and begin wrapping towards the head of the fly. Repeating this process, stopping just short of your starting point will create a smooth transition, stopping once your thread reaches the bead. Once you're happy with your transition, grab your brassy wire and begin wrapping it forward in open spirals until we reach our thread. At which point, we'll secure, taking wraps both in front as well as behind the wire and helicoptering the excess free. Next, we'll grab some small beads, here I'm using a pearl, thread it through a floral leader, here I'm using 6x, and secure it to the top of the fly just behind the bead. Use your thread to fix the fluorocarbon leader in place, taking wraps both in front as well as behind and helping to prop the bead up by taking wraps around the floral carbon between the bead and your hook. Secure in place and snip the excess floral free. If you'd like to try this fly but don't tie, you can pick up this fly as well as all my other favorite variations in my website listed below. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more, and I will see you in the next one. Today, I'm going to be sharing a secret that fly tires don't want you to know. But to start, we'll grab some orange thread and snap the excess free. Continue wrapping your thread to the back of the hook and create a thread dam that'll be important for our next step. Once complete, grab some brown biots, strip off two and place them in a V formation. We'll measure them to be about the length of the hook shank and secure them to the back of the fly. The thread buildup will help display them out. Secure the biots tightly and begin wrapping towards the bead. Once complete, snip the excess furry and grab some brassy wire. Here I'm using copper. Insert the wire into the bead, secure it tightly and wrap back towards the tail. Next, we'll grab one of my favorite dubbing blends, you can find it in the links below, create a dubbing noodle, and begin wrapping it around our hook shank, building up a taper as we work towards the head of the fly. Take your time with this and tighten the dubbing noodle as needed. Now remember, start with a little bit because you can always add more. Next, we'll grab our wire and begin wrapping in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Secure tightly, taking thread wraps both in front, as well as behind the wire, and helicoptering the excess free. And then we'll brush out the body to give this fly a nice buggy look. Pull any excess fibers free and add a very loose dubbing noodle, wrapping this just around the head of the fly. Pull everything back and add a couple thread wraps in front. With this complete, brush it out once again to give it a nice buggy look. And this is a fly called Scruffy. And while it may not look pretty, I prefer fishing these buggy flies. So remember, if you're new to fly tying, don't get discouraged by seeing someone's pretty fly because a fly like this is likely to catch more fish anyway. Subscribe for more and I will see you in the next one. This is one of the world's most used and successful fly patterns. To tie it, we'll grab some Vivas in black, securing it tightly to our hook shank and snapping the excess free. We will then insert some lead-free wire to help hold our bead in place, securing it tightly and helicoptering the strands free. We will then grab some silver brassy wire, insert this into our bead, and begin wrapping it well into the bend of our hook. Once complete, we will begin building up a body transition with our thread. One simple way to do this is return your thread towards the head of the fly and then start wrapping back towards your wire, stopping just before you reach where you started with your thread. Repeating this process will make a nice transition towards the head of our fly that you can make as bulky or as slim as you'd like. Once we're happy with our transition, we will grab our wire and begin wrapping it forward in open spirals towards the head of the fly. Take your time to make sure the wraps are evenly spaced. Once complete, we will secure by taking thread wraps both in front as well as behind our wire and helicoptering the excess free. Grab yourself some peacock hurl. I'll select two strands and secure this to the head of the fly. 
securing them by wrapping slightly back on the body and returning our thread to the bead. We will begin wrapping our peacock around the head of the fly until we reach our thread. Secure by taking thread wraps both in front of the peacock as well as behind and snipping the excess free. And this is the zebra midge. If you would like to support the channel and pick up a few, you can visit my website here to see this and all of the variations of it I like to use. And if you'd like a chance to win this fly, subscribe to the channel, like this video, and comment below hashtag flies. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.